This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this simple flat abstract style cube design using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So I'll minimize this and get started here in Inkscape. Uh, by the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear darkened with these custom icons, a link to that information will be in the description of the video. So the first thing we want to do in Inkscape is make sure the view is set to custom. And we'll zoom in at one to one. And we're going to open up the align and distribute menu with this button over here. We're going to want last selected chosen from that drop down. And then we'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu with that button there. And so what we're going to do now is create a polygon. So we'll come over to the stars and polygons tool. And we're going to want polygons selected, six corners, and rounded and randomized, both set to zero. Then we could hold control and shift and just click and drag on the canvas to create a polygon like that where the corners are going vertically like that. We don't want it like this or like that. We want the corners going vertically like that. And what we can do now is just let go of everything. Uh, I'm going to bring the opacity of that about in half. Uh, we'll go back to the select tool. I'm going to make this red and then I'm going to come over here to this lock icon. I'm going to turn that on and where it says W I'm going to erase whatever number is in there by just highlighting over it and pressing uh, we're going to change it to 300, so we'll just press 300 three, zero, zero and hit enter. So we have a 300 pixel wide uh, polygon like that. And what we want to do now is turn on the snap to cusp nodes, which is up here. Snap to cusp nodes, go ahead and turn that icon on. Then we'll right click that and go to duplicate. We'll make this blue. And I'm going to grab this top corner over here and just click and drag this down to snap it onto this top left corner of the red object. Then I'll click on the red object, right click that, go to dead, uh, duplicate, then hold shift, click on the blue object, and go to path, difference. Actually, no, I'm sorry, not difference. Uh, you can undo that. Uh, we'll go to path, intersection. And then we'll right click that and go to duplicate. Turn that green, flip that horizontally with that button there, and we'll just shift this over to the right side and snap it onto that corner. And then we'll take this blue, uh, this red object, right click that, and go to duplicate, and take this bottom left corner and just snap it onto the top left corner over there. And then we can hold shift and alt and click on that red object again, right where the red object is beneath it, so we have them both selected like that. And we'll go to path, intersection. So we should have these three separate objects here like this. Three separate objects, and that's that. So uh, what we want to do now is um, I'm going to go to the squares and rectangles tool and I'm just going to create a rectangle like this. And I'm going to make that black. I'll come over to the select tool and I'm going to make sure the width of this is 50. So I'll just erase whatever number that is in there. Hit 50, hit enter. And then I want to right click that and go to duplicate and then hold shift and click on the blue object. And we're going to align the left edges and then center on horizontal axis and then click off it to deselect everything. So we'll take just the blue object right here, right click that and go to duplicate, hold shift, click on the black rectangle, and go to path, intersection. And then we could duplicate that by hitting control D on the keyboard and just moving this copy down to the bottom right corner and snapping it like that. And we'll take this black object again, we'll right click that and go to duplicate bring this over here. I'm going to click on it again to get the rotation handles and I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and grab one of these corner arrows and just rotate it around about however many steps that was. Let me see one, two, three, four. Four steps like that. We want the edge of this running parallel with the edge of the red shape there so as you can see it's running parallel with it. So once you've done that I'm going to take this top left corner over here and snap it onto this left corner over there like that and then click on the red object, duplicate that by hitting control D and then hold shift and click on the black object and go to path intersection. And I'll duplicate that again by hitting control D and just snap this one over here. And then I'll duplicate this again by hitting control D and I'll bring this down here. But I'm going to flip it vertically with this button over here, flip selected objects vertically. And then I'll click it, I'll click on it again to get the rotation handles, and I'll hold control and grab this bottom right corner arrow and rotate this around one, two, three, four, four steps like that, and then put this in the corner over here. And then I'll duplicate that by hitting control D, 
snap this into this top left corner over there. And I'll take this black object right here, duplicate that by hitting Control D, and I'll flip that horizontally and snap this over to the right side over here like that. And what we could do now is we could take this green object and pull that out and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on these three black objects where the green object was. So I'll click on that one first, then I'll hold shift and click on this one on the bottom. Still holding shift, click on this one on the top, and I'll unify them all together by going to path, union. And I want to turn those green. And I'll take this red object and I'll just click and drag that out of the way and press delete on the keyboard. We don't need that. And then I'll take this blue object over here and I'm going to flip that horizontally and I'm going to take this bottom corner and snap it onto this bottom corner of the blue object over here. And then finally I'm going to take this black object up here, hit control D to duplicate that and just snap this onto this corner over there like that. Right onto that corner and I'm going to send that to the bottom with the button that says lower selection to the bottom. And finally, we can take this object right here and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. We don't need that. And what I want to do now is take the green object and I want to duplicate that by hitting control D. And then I want to hold shift and click on this black object in the middle of the green object right here. So we have them both selected and go to path difference and then path break apart and then hold shift and click on that black object right there to deselect it just so we have this little end piece selected and now we can just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that because that was that was the whole point of doing that we want to get rid of that extra that extra space in there so what we want to do now is I'm gonna click and drag over the entire graphic and bring the opacity all the way up and as you can see we got the shape of it set we just have to color it in a little bit so I'm gonna click off of that to deselect everything I'm gonna click on this black object over here and hold shift and click on that black object and I'm gonna make this a shade of red make that red like that maybe I'll bring this over here to this end so it's a little more pinkish like that that's pretty good and then I'll click the blue object right here and then hold shift and click the green object so we have them both selected and I'm gonna make this a shade of orange I'll just click on the uh, the yellow color over here and then I'll come up here to the fill tab and under the HSL tab I'll just take the H row and slide that to the left a little bit to make that orange maybe I'll take the L and slide that to the right to make it a little lighter so it contrasts a little better up against the pink and then we can click on the black object up here and hold shift and click on the other two black objects and we can make them yellow and maybe I'll just bring that the L uh, row to the right a little bit to make that a little lighter and that's pretty good and what we can do now is uh, we can give it this little outline, this, this dull blue outline. So I'm just going to click and drag over all of that to select everything. And I'm going to come down here to the color picker and find a shade of dark blue to use. Over here is pretty good. And once I find my shade, I'm going to hold shift and click on that shade of dark blue to give that a, a, an outline, otherwise known as a stroke. And then we'll come over to the stroke style tab. And if you notice, we have these little corners, these little sharp ends sticking out. To get rid of that, I'm just going to make the join rounded and I'll make the cap rounded as well. Then I'll come over to the stroke paint tab and I'm just gonna adjust the color a little bit. I'm gonna move the S row to the left a little bit, make it a little more dull. Maybe move that a little bit like that. And that's pretty much it. We've now created our simple flat style abstract cube graphic using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.